I'm having so much fun with this. I am a little scared that I actually won't be able to do this. Zendaya. She is winning right now. And she's lead in one of my favorite shows, Euphoria. I can write a dissertation on why having a black woman in a role like that is impactful, but that's not what I'm here for either. I am here for this. Look at that. I don't know why, but as soon as I saw this, I just couldn't, I couldn't get over it. Her stylist, Law Roach, dressed her in this custom Tom Ford breastplate for the Critics' Choice Awards. So weird, but in the best way. Whenever I see something like this, the first thing I ask, can I make this? I don't know why I'm this, actually I do know why I'm this way. <laughs> I have always asked myself this question about a variety of things. That's how I end up having tons of DIYs that I have laying around the house. I'm gonna try to make this. I did some research. I wanted to learn how Tom Ford makes it. They do 3D body scans. To buy this is $15,000, 15K. I don't have $15,000. I also don't have a 3D scanner. So I did some research and I went down the rabbit hole a little bit and I found cosplay. When they're trying to build armor for costumes, they're wrapping themselves in layers and layers of duct tape to get that shape and use it as a pattern. So I'm about to get started. To make the duct tape pattern, I use three layers of duct tape and I use different colors to make sure I don't miss any spots. <laughs> I feel like this is really good. While I'm still wearing it, I'm drawing lines on the bottom, center, and sides to show where they go on the breastplate. Hair stuck on tape. I'm gonna have to cut these hairs. Oh well. Damn, that sucks. And I'm free. Oh Lord. Before I start cutting, I'm going to draw some lines following the curves of the body. I'm also going to number the pieces so I remember how to put it back together. This will help me make sure that the shape is accurate when I start gluing the foam pieces together. This is two millimeter, millimeter EVA foam. Yay! Oh, it is thin. Okay. Oh, and it has a smell. I've gotta draw all the pieces. Before I get too ahead of myself, I'm just doing some trial runs, trying to test my theory of how to put this together and getting used to the material. So right now I'm only doing half of the body. That way I don't use up all of my materials. This is my body. <laughs> This looks pretty darn good. The next thing I wanna experiment with is um, the warbler. I wanna see if this is too flimsy to mold the warbler around it. I hope it's not. Y'all, I'm so excited. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't know about this stuff sooner. As you see, some of the pattern pieces look different because I combined them to reduce the seams that would show through after I applied the warbler. I feel like I'm nearing the final stages now. Now I'm using the heat gun to help shape the foam and I'm using that round ball to help give me the shapes that I need. Here I am again being a perfectionist. I kept trying on the foam base to make sure it was the right fit and realized that it was a bit too wide for me so I had to cut a part out and glue it back together. I am now in a good spot to start cleaning up the mess that I made on this thing. I know it looks weird. I'm striving for close, not perfection. Now I'm using quick seal and a little bit of water to fill in and smooth out the seams. Now I'm using the Dremel to smooth down the rough patches. I'm finally at the warbler part, the fun part. Since the foam was so thin, I decided to sandwich it between two pieces of warbler. Starting on the back, I'm heating the warbler and trying to mold it to the back of the foam base. I'm back. Yesterday, I failed. Bigly. I was very confident yesterday that I'd be able to finish this, especially after building such a good base. From here up to this part is fine. It all falls apart right here. This is too flimsy. I am a little scared that I actually won't be able to do this. 
to call my mom today. I was telling her like, yeah, it's harder than I expected. I thought I'd be done yesterday and I'm not. And the first thing she said was, well, it's your first time working with that stuff. Just try again. So I appreciate that, mom. <laughs> so this is two millimeter. This is four. Now, I would love for it to be as thin as the one Zendaya is actually wearing. But if I can't do that, at least I want it to look good. Okay, this is it. The final attempt, I'm redoing the pattern pieces. Again, they've been altered slightly for a better fit. And I'm also doing the warble in sections with plans on using the Dremel to sand down the seams. It looks terrible, but I think it'll work. Now I'm gonna put the second layer of Warbler and it should be seamless. I'm priming with a white gesso, which is basically a white acrylic paint. I'm doing this so that when I spray paint it, the color shows up just a little bit brighter. This is something I figured out during my trial runs a few days ago. I have let it dry. Now I'm about to go outside and do two coats of paint and then a coat of gloss. And then I'm gonna come back and we're gonna do the resin part after it dries a little bit. I'm carefully measuring the solution for the resin. It's a two part solution and you have to make sure you're using the exact same amount for each. If you ever use resin at home, make sure you're wearing a mask and gloves and that you're in a well ventilated area. I have all the windows open and the fans going and the AC is on. Here I'm using the heat gun to get rid of any air bubbles that formed. And when I'm done applying the resin, I have to let it sit for at least four hours to cure, but I think I actually left it alone for about 10 or 12 hours. And here's the final look. Okay, I know it looks nothing like Zendaya's and that's okay. What I've learned is that there's no competing with a 3D scanner and a 3D printer with duct tape and foam. They just don't hold up. Literally, they did not hold up. This was really fun to figure out how to make. In the end, I spent $155 to make this. Let me know what you think.